were you always studious? Were you always serious about what you do, even from your schooling days? Uh, yeah, so I mean, this is my I, segue I, into I wanna, Oxford. I want to, I want to be cool and say no, but I can't because everyone watching this, my family, <laughs> friends included, are like, you've always been such a dork, so I can't avoid answering this question with anything other than a yes. So I mean, yes, I was always that person that you know s- studied really hard and top of my class, all those things. But you know, increasingly. I I and I've and I've worked a lot on this and and you want to transition to Oxford Oxford the time that I spent in Oxford was integral to this is I worked worked hard on not taking that side of my life or that part of me as seriously as I used to growing up you know as an ambitious hard working studious kid how do you reflect on your time spent in yeah. Oxford now we're starting to get to know Sada the person so Oxford, I can describe as probably the single most transformative experience in my life, not because of the just the academic and intellectual side of it. Oxford was unique in many respects. I mean, the university setup in and of itself is unique. The collegiate system where you have the different colleges uh, uh, that are essentially, you know, your social life your uh, space to network with other students, pursuing other programs, uh, that that set that university experience apart from doing graduate school in a very technical field in any other part of the world. Because then you're stuck with your program, you're stuck with the people you do the, the research with in your lab, for example, and you would have to actively curate what you do outside of outside of your PhD. Oxford curated an end-to-end experience for, for me that exposed me to people studying and doing research and innovating in so many different fields. I was just constantly surrounded by uh, intellectual input, intellectual conversations, debates about outside of outside of the lab, right? So the PhD experience aside, the social life of of living in Oxford town, being part of the college I was affiliated with, you know, having dinners and, 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 you know, very ceremonial Harry Potter like dinners, but dinners nonetheless, and, and, and coffee and catching up, uh, uh, in the graduate common rooms with people doing everything from PhDs in, in Latin and Greek and history, masters in public policy, uh, the undergraduates doing, uh, 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 philosophy, political science and economy, the Oxford Union, the world's oldest debating society, which I immerse myself also in completely. So, um, you know, let alone all of the traditions that, that the university holds very near and dear, you know, the, 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 uh, you know, punting and the rowing competitions. And there was just so much to explore. And prior to that, I was in Boston In Boston, uh, it, it just so happened that my siblings and I, we, we all sort of overlapped be it two, three years apart from each other. So my older brother was there. I overlapped with him. He left. My sister came. So we were always living with family. And as you know, uh, a lot of Saudis ended up studying or st- study in Boston. So I had friends from school. I had, you know, uh, uh, friends of friends. It was like a microcosm of Saudi outside of, <laughs> of Riyadh. So uh, in terms of... Uh, the the social and cultural awakening that I think informed a lot of who I am today, that came from Oxford because I was living alone, um, very few Saudis, and you had to immerse yourself completely. So in that way, it was it was very transformative. Let alone the fact that you know I worked, I did my PhD with really pioneers uh, in in my field some of the most highly cited uh, research scientists in the space of diabetes genomics, which is what I did my PhD in, two incredibly intimidating PIs and supervisors, and I'm going to shout them out, Mark McCarthy and Anna Gloin, who just shaped me and molded me into the intellectual character that I am today in terms of how well I write, how well I present science, how accessible it is, how rigorous I am in my intellectual pursuits. Um you know, they've pushed me so far outside of my comfort zone with my PhD. And I will forever be thankful to them for that. 
because had they not pushed me so far out and really, you know, it's like whenever I feel like I got to the edge and that's as much as I can give, they identified more potential. Here's here's what else you can do. Here's, so I went in, for example, to the PhD program uh, not knowing a single word of code. And one of my supervisors, Mar- Mark McCarthy, I mean, is supervises teams who do statistical genetics and sequencing analysis and it's all people writing python and r and and all these coding languages and scripts and and it was an integral part of the science so they encouraged me to 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 learn coding from scratch he uh he allowed me to sort of uh basically uh spend time with all of his postdocs and research students who were fluent coders sit with them for a few months put pause on everything else and learn how to code. Uh, and I and I picked it up organically without taking courses or classes or um, because they gave me, they encouraged me, they gave me the capacity, they realized the potential that that could have on my research, on on me, on my career, on my skill set. And they and they gave me the opportunity and time and resources to pick to pick up that skill, which is an incredibly difficult skill. I mean, it's a statistical programming language, but that's what they that's what they did. That's why not only Oxford, but them as PhD supervisors. For me, at that time, that sort of combination, again, it was like the perfect storm of being in the right place at the right time, working with the right people. Uh, so so transformative is the word I would use to describe Oxford. Are you the same Sada today without Oxford in your life? No way. No way. Oxford, I mean, not only... Not only Again, from a social perspective, from an intellectual perspective, was it very enriching? Uh, it opened up my eyes to the world in ways that I thought were not possible. So, because the research uh, is so strenuous, it was it was such a it was such a difficult task. Probably the most difficult task I will ever do in my life is is the PhD that I did for a number of reasons, right? And I won't. But it was it was the most difficult thing in the world. And I remember when I used to uh, call home and speak to my mom and complain about how, you know, I'm I don't feel as smart as I used to be, and I don't feel like I'm you know the most exceptional person here, and this is really hard, and you know this my my experiment failed or whatever. Complain to her about anything. She always obviously you know encouraged me and motivated me, and um, and she used to say to me, this is like when a Navy SEAL undergoes their training. Their training is meant to be the hardest thing they encounter, so that anything they encounter in the field pales in comparison, right? Or at least is manageable, they know how to navigate it. So she told me, by the time you finish, you're going to thank me for saying this to you because you will realize that everything else that life hits you with, this experience at Oxford will feel like Navy SEAL training. And so far, that has proven true. I, I, I And I don't think I will encounter anything on a collective level that will be as difficult as that experience, psychologically, emotionally, intellectually, mentally. And so in that sense, there's no way I would have been the same person with the same emotional, mental resilience, with the same intellectual capacity, with the same ability to tap into different reserves in my brain and, and identify patterns and, and make links and, 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 and you know be as critical and analytical as I am. I think a lot of that you know, Boston and my time at Wellesley, which was liberal arts school outside of Boston, that was transformative in its own way because I was exposed to things like anthropology and theater and and took courses in history and in art and art history. Oxford was a Oxford was like a psychological game. <laughs> Oxford was like a real psychological game. At the same time, in order for you to to endure an experience like that, you have to center and align yourself somehow because otherwise then it gets too much so I was very athletic during my time there I did a lot of strength training I lifted weights uh, I did pull-ups and push-ups and 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 you know released a lot of the tension from the intellectual pursuit in a phys- in a really healthy physical way so I was probably at the healthiest I was from a physical perspective mentally I have had to do a lot of soul searching and alignment and sort of break everything down into first principles and build convictions back up again to be able to give me that that um resilience and the tenacity 
to continue to believe and to keep going and to make sure that as I evolve, because I was evolving very rapidly over the course of those four years, just by virtue of how old I was at the time and by virtue of the intensity of the experiences I was undergoing. So, so I made sure that I constantly um, sort of re-evaluated who I am to myself uh, uh, and, and continue to have sort of a, a grasp of, of my, my identity, deconstruct it, reconstruct it to fit with the way I was evolving with, you know, evolving intellectually, evolving emotionally, evolving, just growing up as a person. So all of it just so happens that all of these things happening in parallel led to a really profound experience. And because on top of all of that, I was living alone for the first time, meaning without any family members, no parent, no sibling, no uh, friends of friends or uh, from, from Saudi or, or friends of my sister or friends of my brother. It was just uh, me, myself and I. Uh, when I come back, you know, after I socialize with people, I come back to my apartment and it's me with myself, with my thoughts, trying to recenter, realign, build resilience, build tenacity, build conviction uh, for something that I was enduring at the time that was so difficult. And, and I think that's why it was exceptionally profound. It sounds exceptionally profound. <laughs> uh, I mean, Navy SEAL comparison, I think, was... I was so immersed into that story. It's, may it's, may it's, it's, it's maybe a little hyperbolic, but it, it is it is true. It, was, it makes it was sense. So rigorous. It yeah. makes sense. 